The threat of cyber attacks takes a frightening turn as malicious software unleashed by Hackers Friday is already impacting over a million personal devices connected to the Internet, such as routers and DVRs. Separately, Johnson & Johnson on Tuesday warns doctors and patients one of its insulin pumps is vulnerable to being hacked. The vulnerability within J&J's one-touch ping system was first discovered by Jay Radcliffe, a senior security consultant with Rapid7, an independent cybersecurity and tech firm. And he joins us now to discuss. Welcome, Jay. Thanks so much for being with us. It's great to be here. So, Jay, just to be clear, you don't work for Johnson & Johnson, and you were not commissioned to test the product. So what made you decide to test this particular pump, and what did you find? Well, I'm actually a type 1 diabetic. So this is an a insulin pump that I was using for my own personal treatment. And I'm a very curious person, and this is kind of the nature of a security professionals is to look and see how these devices communicate. And what I led to, that's what led me to find that there wasn't a lot of security between the remote control unit and the insulin pump itself. And you reported this to Johnson & Johnson, and they have, of course, thank you, thanked you, I'm hoping, for pointing this out. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. We, we went to Johnson & Johnson in April, and we've worked very closely with them to make sure that they understood the technical issues with the with the findings and also to work with them to make sure that the recommendations uh, were actually going to work. You know, we have a commitment to making sure that patients are safe, especially because I am a diabetic, uh, that we didn't want to scare people too much, but we also wanted to make sure that they understood the risks so they could make the best decision possible. Absolutely. So going forward, this product, that vulnerability has been addressed. Is that correct? Correct. Users that have this product have an option to turn off the wireless feature, and that would make that would make these vulnerabilities go away. Okay. Um, and that's that's the best course of action for those feel that. Okay, great. It's too risky. I'm sorry, we are having a little bit of audio difficulty, but we can still hear you. I, I wonder, is this the first time a medical device has been found to be vulnerable in this way? And how do you think this will change the way medical devices are made going forward? It is not. Uh, I did some research back in 2011 on a Medtronic device and found very similar problems. As these devices get developed and they become newer and, and we go forward in the Internet of Things world, we're going to see more of these connected devices and we're going to see more security as they become developed. Now, speaking of going forward in this Internet connected world, as we mentioned at the top, there's this troubling report of the, the code that's been released behind one of the most powerful online attacks ever. You, of course, work at a cybersecurity firm, so I'm sure you're aware of this. What, uh, what, are, you be, what are you doing there to, to prevent this? Well, we tr try and incorporate uh, lots of different uh, angles to make sure that security is addressed. From the very beginning of the design of these devices, security needs to be thought of and how to update these devices uh, to make sure that when we do find vulnerabilities that we can address them quickly and efficiently and safely. Um, but also to make sure that com companies have good defenses so they can protect their resources from these types of attacks. And Jay, what advice do you have then for consumers who may have one of these routers or video cameras or DVRs that may be infected? How, how would you advise consumers to go forward in light of this recent hacking attack? Yeah, I think that the best way forward is most of these manufacturers are addressing the problems. So they're going to issue updates and releases. And you can probably go to their website and find the technical details based upon the version and the product type that you have and apply those updates if you are vulnerable. All right, Jay Radcliffe, thank you so much for all of that.